At what distance along the central perpendicular axis of a uniformly charged plastic disk of radius of 0.6 meters is the magnitude of the electric field equal to one half the magnitude of the electric field at the center of the surface of the disk. Now, as derived in the chapter, uh, the formula for the electric field at a point uh, coaxial with a uniformly charged disk is given by E equals uh, lowercase sigma, or the surface charge density of the disk, divided by uh, 2 epsilon naught, multiplied by 1 minus z, where z is the distance between the point and the center of the disk, divided by the square root of z squared plus r squared, where r refers to the radius of the disk. Now the problem mentions the magnitude of the field at the center of the surface of the disk. So if we write a formula for that, let's call it E sub c, then at the center of the disk, z is just going to be equal to zero, because it basically means that there is no distance at all between the center of the disk and the, the point we're analyzing. So if z is zero, then this whole term becomes zero. So it ends up just becoming this first term here uh, times one. So the electric field at the center of the disk is just equal to the surface charge density divided by two epsilon naught. Now, according to the problem, we're looking for wherever E is equal to one half of E sub C or E equals one half of E sub C. And we can set this up as a ratio by writing it as E over E sub C equals one half. Now let's try writing this ratio with our electric field formulas. So I've written it as E divided by E sub C, and I've used the formulas we had before, where uh, the electric field at E, or at some distance away from the disk, is equal to this formula, divided by this one term here. So we can see that this term, the surface charge density divided by 2 epsilon naught, just cancels out, and we're left with this formula here, 1 minus z over the square root of z squared plus r squared. Now, of course, as we mentioned earlier, this ratio has to be equal to 1 half. So we set this equal to 1 half. And we can simplify this a little bit further. Because if we were to add this term right here to both sides, and then subtract 1 half from this side, we can see that this term is still equal to 1 half uh, without the 1 minus being there at all. Now let's actually solve for z. Uh, let's first square both sides of this. And now we've gotten that pesky radical symbol out of the way. And uh, again, we're trying to solve for z here because we want to know what z has to be uh, wherever the ratio is equal to one half. So now that we've already set the ratio equal to one half, all, we, all that's left for us to do is to solve for z. So let's first multiply this term here by both sides. And then let's get this four out of the way by multiplying that by both sides. And now we can put the z squareds together by subtracting this one z squared uh, from both sides so that uh, we'll end up with 3z squared on the left, and now one of those z squareds has been removed. Now I have divided both sides by 3 to get z squared on its own, and then we take the square root of this to actually solve for z. And now we can see that z is equal to r divided by the square root of 3. Unfortunately, r is the only variable that we're given by the problem, the radius of the disk. So, now let's write in the radius of the disk, which is 0 0.600 meters, divided by the square root of 3. And this gets us a distance of 0 0.346 meters. 
and that is the distance at which the point needs to be for the magnitude of its electric field to be one-half of that of the point on the center of the disk.